time and effort into a platform that does not care about the people that are on the platform. Hi everyone, welcome or welcome back to my channel. I am Antoinette Evans and on this channel, I find ways to help you maximize your wardrobe and simplify your life. Today, we are very much touching on simplifying your life. I don't know about anybody else, but Instagram has been the death of me for like the past two years. I grew my page to about 5,000 and some change followers Within the past year, I have been losing followers like, I wouldn't say like crazy, but I lose followers and then I gain followers. I've noticed more of the followers that I'm losing are inactive pages or pages that I just don't engage with, which is fine because even though I'm losing that, I am increasing my level of engagement which honestly i'll take the level of engagement because that will actually help my channel to grow steadily over time but the level of effort that goes into maintaining that page and it's just me i don't have a team behind me not anymore like not like i did in delaware i don't have a team behind me i'm doing this on my own and i feel like i am putting too much time and effort into a platform that does not care about the people that are on the platform. That's my opinion and I'm sticking with it. So I am silently quitting Instagram. Now that does not mean I'm not going to post anymore. That does not mean I'm not going to show up on Instagram anymore. I do still intend on growing my page and my following so that way you know, the portfolio I'm trying to build will showcase itself. But what I'm not going to do is to do content specifically for Instagram. I just can't, I can't, I can't. There's one video I put on YouTube Shorts, Pinterest. Actually, did I put on Pinterest? Nope, I put it on YouTube Shorts, Instagram, and TikTok. The video did extremely well on YouTube Shorts, and I'll put that here somewhere. Some people don't understand that sitting in your own house, in peace, eating snacks, and minding your own business is priceless. Put the same video on Instagram, and it did okay. Put the same video on TikTok, and the level of engagement I got on TikTok was phenomenal. And then when I compare all three platforms, Instagram had the lowest amount of viewership and the lowest amount of engagement. And in back of my mind, I'm just like, I don't understand why. Like I'm trying, I'm trying to understand, but I don't, I don't understand why. And at this time, I was way more consistent with Instagram versus any other platform. I have been focusing more on YouTube Shorts because I am looking at growing my YouTube page more. But I put the same content on all the platforms. But for some reason, on every other platform, it's doing very well compared to Instagram. What I've noticed is I'm putting more time and effort into a platform that is not growing my business right now. So I'm going to put Instagram on the back burner and put other platforms that are actually performing well and rewarding content creators and helping me build my portfolio on the forefront. So this is my plan. I have a website. If you haven't visited yet, I will put it down in the description below and or up on the screen so that way you can go take a look for yourself. 2023, I spent majority of the time revamping my website. It has a new flow, a new concept, a new feel. I want it to feel like it's a newsletter. I want it to feel like it's a journal, like it's an online magazine. That is the direction I'm trying to go in career-wise also. If you don't know, my ultimate career goal is to be a fashion director 
In order for me to do that, I have to speak on fashion. I have to write about fashion. I have to understand what the trends are and what's possibly upcoming and then different things of that nature. With Instagram, it is a great tool, but it's lacking. So instead, I want to continue growing my own website, continue growing my subscribers on my website to my, my bi-monthly newsletter and build community specifically around my website. So if Instagram so happens to die off in the next year or so, I have a platform already that is built from scratch that is my own. So my content, for the most part, what I will be doing for 2024, with me doing my photo shoots and creative uh, portfolios and going back to editorials, things of that nature, will be primarily for building my website. Afterwards, the next focus is YouTube. YouTube is actually helping me with learning how to speak on camera. I tend to move my hands all over the place, all over my face. I'm trying to learn not to do that and keep my hands a little bit more on the subtle side. When I speak about fashion, when I speak in general, I want to make sure what I'm saying comes across the camera in the right way for my future position. Granted, I don't know if my future position will require me to be behind the camera, but I'm putting in that practice from now so that when that time comes, I'm ready to go. Now granted, I don't have the biggest setup in the world, but I have a setup that works for now. And in my now stage, I'm just going to keep going and keep growing and keep learning. I watch all of my videos as you guys watch them. So yes, I film it, I edit it, um, I put it up. It's always going up on Sundays. On Sundays or Monday, one of the two, whenever I actually have the time to sit down, I watch the video and I make notes of what I see on the TV versus on the phone. And I make notes for the next time of, internet, you need to slow down in your speech. You need to pronunciate your words a little bit different. You need to showcase the fashion elements in a different way in a different light. You need to slow down your movements when it comes to showing denim pants or shoes. Maybe you should try a different angle when you walk into. All of these things I'm writing down and I'm taking notes so the next time around, I can reincorporate that. Again, I don't know if my future creative position or my future corporate um, fashion director job will require that, but I'm starting that from now for a just in case I am practicing out loud, basically. And YouTube is pretty much the platform for me to practice that with you guys. Um, my next platform that I'm gonna focus on is Pinterest. I have been sleeping on Pinterest for a long time, mainly because I didn't know how to use it. I can't remember who, I think it was Tadika B. I think, I think it was Tanika B that had talked about her putting up um, her post on Pinterest and how well received it was even from the Pinterest team and how that has helped her to get additional opportunities. And I was just like, okay, but how can that help me to build my portfolio? I'm not looking at what opportunities can I get. I'm looking at how can I build? How can I build a brand? How can I build a voice? How can I build community? And then eventually when the opportunities come up, they'll come up because they've seen the community and the pages that I've built. So I said, you know what, let me just start. So I started my Pinterest page in 2023. I don't remember specifically when. I wanna say it was right at the beginning or it was the latter part of 2022, one of the two. And I was kind of experimenting at first because I wasn't really sure what I was supposed to be doing. But more and more lately, I see it. I see it. I believe I'm at like 302 followers so far on Pinterest, which is beyond me because I could have sworn I had 25 a day or so ago. <laughs> but the level of consistency with photos and video and I'm working on my SEO language, On I'm working on my keywords, I'm working on what tags make sense for the video. Um, putting my links in there so if someone is interested, they can go back to the link of the outfit or 
draw them back to my website. So again, it builds community, it builds traffic back to my own personal website. Pinterest has really humbled me, if I'm being honest, with teaching me how and teaching me why, and then doing the execution to make sure that it actually makes sense. Going back and studying the analytics of Pinterest and seeing the impression, how many times was this clicked? Did it show up on the page? Did it show up on the front end? Did someone type in a keyword and it so happened to pop up? Which is crazy because someone I've met was like, oh my God, I've actually seen you on Pinterest. We were looking for outfits for like mid-size, plus size, something that we were going to and your page popped up and you're here. And I was just like, okay <laughs> okay i was so taken back and surprised that i really didn't even know what to say in that moment and i was just like all right the hard work is starting to show the hard work is starting to show i just have to keep showing up i just have to keep pushing forward i have to keep going and making sure i vocalize my fashion voice and what that looks like for the general population that was a humbling moment. So Pinterest is the platform that I will be focused on, on as well. And then from there, of course, TikTok. I feel like TikTok and I don't really agree. Um, I understand with TikTok, you can be more authentic and you don't have to have the prettiest background and the best lighting. You just have to press film and just go. But I'm not always the press film and go type of girl again. When I do content, I pretty much do the same thing for all the platforms, but there are certain platforms that will get certain things versus others. Pinterest, just fashion. Just fashion. That's it. Outfit ideas, how to, that's pretty much the extent of my Pinterest page and I leave it there. YouTube is all things uh, fashion related, maybe a little bit of motivation for the most part. But again, I keep it fashion and lifestyle on YouTube. Instagram lately has only been fashion. When I try to showcase something else for Instagram, it flops, it doesn't do well, the algorithm doesn't pick it up, it doesn't extend anywhere. But TikTok, I've been able to kind of dip, dibble and dabble with different things on TikTok. From five minute makeup looks to making pineapple juice at home to putting my house to bed. So a combination of lifestyle, fashion, beauty, and then random stuff actually works on TikTok. Now, my intention is to continue doing that and to not change my strategy at all for TikTok. I can do the quick, quick videos. Like if I'm out and about and I like my outfit and it takes two, three seconds for me to put it up on like a pole, walk away, come back, post it fine it doesn't have to be perfect the my when i had christmas and i hosted it wasn't the best video but i put it up in my stories on tiktok that actually did really well so i'm going to continue the same strategy for tiktok and hope that i can grow that page and double the amount of followers that i had for the last two and a half years again i'm still i personally feel like i'm still trying to understand tiktok and what tiktok is asking from me content wise but i believe what i've been working what i've been doing has been working lately so i'm just going to keep going lastly is instagram now i'm not going to completely quit instagram but i am going to slow down with the level of content i place on instagram i'm not going to focus primarily on trying with instagram it's been more of it has to be properly it has to be properly curated that's what i feel like instagram has been lately it has to be pop, properly curated if it is not a hundred percent curated the color grade isn't there the aesthetic the motion of the video and having a uh, paying for for a videographer if that element isn't there i feel as though the content doesn't do as well it doesn't have the same reach I'm not going to fight against whatever in the world <laughs> this algorithm is trying to do and suppress what has been working on other platforms. Instead, 
I'm going to continue posting to my stories because that does really well. I get a lot of engagement in my stories. And every once in a while, if it feels right, then I'll post on Instagram. But I'm not going to primarily focus all of my effort in trying to make content for Instagram specifically and not drawing all of the energy out from all the other platforms that are actually helping me to build my brand. That is the mindset that I'm going into 2024 with. I took a backseat to my business to focus on my mental health and my physical health. Now that my mental health is in a much better place, I can jump back into, okay, let's get the business back up and running. Let's get the brands, um, let, let's get the opportunities to come back in. Let me showcase what this level of healthy mentality actually looks like through fashion and ready to go. I have some goals that I want to accomplish this year that I am not going to showcase with everybody, but when it happens, it will happen and I will showcase it in that moment. But until then, thank you guys so much for watching. I'm Antoinette Evans. See you later. Okay, bye.